Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, still waiting for a tooth to heal, so I don't quite sound like myself. Today we're going to take a look at a little project that uh, my assistant, Aiden, built. And this is a CW Keir kit from Vectronix. And uh, why it's useful, since all radios these days have gears built in, is that this is a great code practice oscillator for uh, using a set of paddles. Okay, most code practice oscillators, you can only use them to make a tone, but we're going to show how we can put this together and make it work for a lot of different things. I also have a case coming for this, also made by Vectronix, and I'm hoping that that comes today. So let's take a closer look. This right here is made by Vectronix, uh, which is a subsidiary of MFJ. And you can see here it's a model BEC201. Uh, it was made back uh, 24 years ago. Okay, and I've had the kit for ages and just put it together. This is the manual for it, the CW kit, which is not only the instruction manual, um, but is the manual for how to operate it, okay? Now, what's useful about something like this, which is not very expensive, is that it enables you to do code practice with an iambic uh, a set of iambic paddles, okay? Now, I've got that plugged into here, and the audio output, I've got this headphone here so we can turn up the volume quite a bit. Okay, so here we have, let's just move this a little bit. This um, is the speed, this is the volume, this is the on-off switch, this switches you between menu items and you enter the menu items by um, the procedures that are outlined in here. So you've got uh, quite a number of choices of what you can do with the menu item. The functions automatic, uh, iambic, A or B, reverse if you want to go this way for some reason, uh, tone, uh, raises the side tone frequency. The W uh, represents the weight value between one or 2.5 and 25 and 75%. That has to do with the dot to dash ratio. And X is a tune, gives a continuous key down for adjusting the transmitter or antenna tuner and tapping either paddle exits the tune mode. So let's see how this is used for code practice. Now, a lot of modern radios, it is possible to turn the volume, or I'm sorry, to turn the transmit power all the way down to zero, but that does not mean it is not transmitting. It could be transmitting just a little. So I would recommend you do your personal code practice oscillator uh, discovery for this with this iambic gear right here. And so you can like uh, do A, B, C, D, E, F, ah, C, need practice there, G, H, I, J. Now notice on that J there, I hit one I, or one I, and then I did the three dash is just by holding that thing down. That's the beauty of an iambic gear. Okay, J, K. Notice there I was holding this down and talked that in and inserted it in. K, L, M, N, O, A. Ah. W. 
No, no, no. There we go. See why it's good to practice this thing? And it was X, Y, Z. Okay? And, of course, all the numbers and prosines and everything like that. Now, one thing, you know, you, you don't modulate your sending very much when you're doing that with paddles. When you use a straight key, you're making each of the dots and dashes mechanically yourself. And they can be quite a bit different from each other. And the pattern and the rhythm of how you send this with the straight key is called an operator's fist. A fist. How that's used for that. Now, with this thing right here, the ratio between the dots and dashes is set at exactly 3 to 1. Okay? And you can send, one of the things about this is you can send fairly quickly. I've got it set for maybe 18 or 20 words a minute. So, so that's calling CQ from KE0OG. Okay, so this is a very handy thing. There are others out there. They're getting hard to find because almost all radios have them in it. These were originally designed for radios that did not have built-in keyers, but that was 25 years ago. They all have built-in keyers now. If you do need to key a radio, here is your keying output. This will actually key a radio. Now, the headphones are here to give you a so-called side tone. And that's the sound you hear in the headphones, which are right here. And the side tone allows you to know what you're sending. Originally, when I had my, uh, was doing things with Morse code, I was sending blind. I didn't know. I couldn't hear what I was sending. So it was very common for keyers to include side tones. Uh, now, of course, the radio has the side tone. And the side tone is actually the frequency to match for the incoming CW signal. Okay, so there you have it. So a lot of you out there who are trying to learn CW and want to become CW aficionados, you find just from my stale keying of this, and this whole thing together is called a keyer, um, that I need a little bit of practice when I get up to the high speeds. So you may too, it's nice to have something like this. Another thing that you can do with your current radio, if it has a built-in keyer, is just set it all up and transmit into a dummy load, turn it down to zero watts, and then you're sh sure not to be bothering anybody, okay? Um, now often, and this thing has the capability to do that, uh, you want to have a shorting bar or something you do that with the Morse key just by holding it down so that you can get a steady tone through the system so that you can tune the antenna tuner uh, or whatever you need to do. On some of the old tube radios, you've got to set up the Pi network output. Okay, and you need a signal to do that. Very often that's done with a low signal. After you get it tuned up, you crank up the power to what you want to use. So there you have it. Kind of fun to look at. If you would um, like to uh, find ways to contact me, uh, don't forget the monthly drawing to enter, the weekly live stream, things like that. Um, you can uh, watch the next couple slides and they'll tell you how to do that. Also, I have a list of the wonderful people who are helping keep this channel afloat financially. Thank you so very much and 73.